Today we are talking about altars. Please be honest, just go on, just go on. And this week I, I was leaving the office uh, on Thursday night at around 11. Good to see you, Nampiris. We haven't spent time this week, I've missed you. But good to see you. Good to see you, Minister George, and your lovely wife. And good to see each and every one of you. <clears throat> and as I was leaving the office, and I got to the gate, there's a man who stopped me and he said, uh, Mom, I would like to talk to you. And when I looked at him, I was so happy <clears throat> because it was an answered prayer. It was a member of RIG and he's a soldier. And I remember one time at 3 a.m. while we were praying, I was talking about bringing down altars in our place of work. And as I was giving a testimony of how at KBC we have opened up an altar for God in the makeup room. It doesn't have to be in a fancy place. <clears throat> and um, bringing altars down. And we saw the hand of God. And we've been seeing the hand of God in KBC when we took down that altar. <clears throat> and last week I just shared a testimony of something that the Lord had spoken about KBC. And it was announced in the papers. And it's interesting that even as I was reading news on Thursday, everything that Rig has prophesied about, I read it on news. I don't know why God chose us to carry his presence and to do his work. It is so humbling. To even come here and to worship him and his presence to come down before us. And for him to speak and to release secrets to us. And to show us how to pray. And for him to move in this nation through us. What have we done, Rig East Africa? Nothing. It is his grace. It is his mercy. And it can be so easy to forget. And when this soldier came, he said, <clears throat> Mama, you sent me a message and you asked me, why are you not in Nairobi? He had been transferred. And I was praying and I was like, God, my son needs to come back to Nairobi. And the Lord said, he's coming back. It is already done. And he told me, when I saw your message and you were asking me, when are you coming to Nairobi? He knew God was transferring him. And he told me, drop me. And we prayed together. He went on his knees. And I understood why he went on his knees. The army going on its knees to say thank you to God. He represents the army of Kenya. How many of you know wherever you work, where I work in KBC, I represent my nation. And he kneeled and I could just tell, yes, the army of Kenya has kneeled. And if because he's representing the army in such a powerful way, then the Lord will use him to rise in the army. And so the Lord, he told me, I told him, let me drop you to your new workstation. Guess where I dropped him? Who can guess? Yes, State House. This is a man who, when I was meeting him, had given up on life and the spirit of death was just upon him and to drop him there I just said only you God only you God and I remember when we went to state house he was kneeling as we prayed the 100 of us and the Lord gave us this nation and as you hear testimonies over testimonies, we can have one Sunday of just testimonies. Recently, I was meeting with my prayer partners and we were meant to pray. But we were just giving testimonies a whole day. We didn't end up praying for the things we wanted to pray for, but just thanking God. And these things, even today, we have witnessed the presence of God. It is not because we are powerful. 
It is not because prophet Cynthia is powerful and she can fast and pray. There is an altar that Rig has been building of prayer. Rig will always be known as the house of prayer. And every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we have been meeting for prayer. I don't know anybody who has been faithfully been meeting and coming for prayer and has not seen heaven and visions. The reason why God asked us to make those prayers is not just to make you give your needs, but there is a portal that is opening and he wants us to have access. If you know that portal, you felt it here. You have been feeling it in your home. It just opens and everything begins to change. The wrong people begin to live your life. Everything changes. It is so powerful. And so as we were learning about taking over the spheres, one of the things we must understand is that you must be an altar for God. You're either, let me tell you in life, you're either an altar for God or for Satan. It's only two ways. That's why when people say, I just go to church, I'm like, your altar is for Satan. It is only two ways. Your altar is either for God or for Satan. Men who run the world, and I also mean women, who sit in the highest offices, understand the altars and how to service the altars. Every leader that you see in your newspaper, the cover of your newspaper, every powerful man and woman, every wealthy man and woman, everyone known for great excellence, services an altar. And you might decide to ignore this topic, but the reason why you're ignoring it is because it is Satan's altar that you are servicing. And if you understand then what an altar is, as I will explain today, you will understand why I am saying that you are either serving God's altar or Satan's altar. Altars is a place where transactions happen between heaven and earth. You are the only ones who have the permission to move and transact on earth. If Satan needs to transact on earth, he needs you. That's why people are demon possessed. Outside your body, they can do nothing. Outside your body, there is very little that Satan can do. And even when God wants to move on earth, he moves through you. You have the legislation. You have the power, the mandate. It cannot be that you think you're useless. Yet for God to move, he needs you. For David to become king, God had to wait until Samuel decided to go do it. And he kept on telling him, this Saul man is not my man. <clears throat> and Samuel took his time. And God could not move and come down straight to heaven, I mean to earth, and do to David and crown him and anoint him. And yet you want to walk as a Christian thinking that you're mundane, that you're nothing. And when situations come to your door, the only thing you want to do is to send out prayer requests, yet you carry all power. What is an altar? Have you ever visited a place and you just began to feel so sad? depressed. There are people even when you see them, you're like, oh my goodness, not today, God. There are some relatives when they tell you, I want to come, you're like, oh, Holy Spirit, not today, please. There are some places you go to and you feel so defiled. There are people who will touch your head for us ladies as you're making, they're making your hair. And when you get home, you will undo. There are places where you go and you feel so blessed. There are places where you go and you feel so loved. There are people when you see any time, for example, when I'm going through a tough time, I remember when I was finishing the, the walk and I was getting to Olympic primary, I prayed, I told God, please, wherever Nempiris is, send Nempiris, please, I need Nempiris. Why? I just knew when I see her, I'll just feel peace. 
There is something that she carries and I think that's why she's my PA. And she just carries this presence of God and allows me sometimes, I'm like, I just come and sit and she doesn't have to talk. The other day I was just going through so much and I was like, I wish I could have a cup of tea from Nempiris. I could make my cup of tea. But there is something she carries. And as I was thinking about it, I said, I hope I, there are other people who feel that way about me. That when they see me, they just begin to feel. Ah, the ones who feel that way about me have seen you not. <laughs> and there are times I see people coming to my house and they lay on the carpet. And before even I start talking, they just begin to speak in tongues. There is an altar in my house that speaks. There's a man of God who came and he named my house Jazril. Because people's lives just change when they sit in the living room. Those who have sat on that carpet, I see you saying amen. Things just alternate on that carpet, in that home. I remember one time some people came and I just said, let us pray. And as I just said, Awa, hey, demons just started manifesting. And I, in my head, I was like, and I'd seen that. I wanted to ask them, surely, how could you come to a house like this? You are planning to do your own things. But there is an altar. An altar is a place. It can be a platform or a system where the spirit realm makes contact with the physical realm on a legal ground. As I said, there are things God needs you. And God is always looking for men. One of the most humbling things, and that is why I was just feeling like crying as we were starting, is because to be very honest, as human beings, we are filthy. But just imagine we just decided to worship and God came through. God is always looking for men who will say yes. Because he wants to expand his kingdom on earth. He wants to ensure that it is on earth as it is in heaven. He is just looking for men to say yes. You don't have to be holy. You don't have to be the best of the best. He just wants you to say yes. He's looking for a platform, a system, a person who can allow contact between the heavens and the earth. As we were worshipping, I just saw a realm just open. I really pray that we can all really be seen. To see when we are here the things that God does. An altar is here. When we came here, students used to die a lot. We've not received a single report since when we started meeting here that a student has died. It is impossible. Why are altars so important? I was just thinking about it as I was preparing for this service. When there are altars of God, certain things can never happen. The enemy cannot take up that territory. This week I was talking to Danko, they are the ones who are manufacturing our pipes and the pipes are over. The next stage is uh, perforation, putting holes in them. And every pipe has scripture on it. Why? We are putting up an altar of God in Kibra. In the center of Kibra. It is not a coincidence that when we went and we started praying in Kibra, there was peace in this nation. And we are seeing the opposition leader working with our president. And even looking to go work outside. These things are not a coincidence. When prophets go to a place and begin to speak, we don't do things coincidentally or we just don't wake up. It is the Holy Spirit that moves through us. And God uses prophets a lot to put up altars. But it shouldn't just be prophets. It should be every single child of God. That everywhere you stand, there is an altar that speaks. In Exodus 17 from verse 14 to 15, then the Lord said to Moses, write this for a memorial in the book and recount it in the hearing of Joshua, 
that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called its name, The Lord is my banner. Many times we see men of God who have done great things in scripture put up an altar for God. They are putting up a system of authorization. An altar is a system of authorization. When you begin to see some patterns in your life, you know there is an altar. It is a system of authorization. And systems are very powerful because that system can stay from the day of your great-grandfather. And I just saw the Holy Spirit as I was standing here saying he was uprooting things from our great-grandfather. Systems are powerful. They ensure that whether you die or not, you can pass it down to your children. The enemy is clever. He doesn't just come for you for one day. He'll make sure there is a system. And where he has hit you, it will hit your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. But there is also a system of God, an altar of God, that can make sure it will uproot those systems. And as you carry God, so will your children, your great-grandchildren. An altar is a platform where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on legal grounds. An altar is a platform where covenants are activated and maintained. We see over and over again Moses putting up altars. And that is why God is even telling him, write this for a memorial in the book. And many times you have noticed as I am teaching, I go back to the 100 days. Because there are certain things that God told us. Even as we talk about Occupy, it is something that the Lord visited Apostle Tommy. And he continues to teach us. And our assignment should be clear. That all this we are seeing is not to show off that we really know God. But it is to Occupy. There is a covenant. There is an altar that has been laid. And there is a covenant that must be maintained. And altars give life to covenants. A lot of times when people come and they say, I remember one time I was in prayer and someone called me and I could hear they were in hospital and the machine and resuscitation. That T noise, you know that noise and... One, two, three. One, and I knew what they wanted. He said, please pray. Pray for my husband. One time a woman called and was like, pray. The child was in ICU. Pray. Pray for my son. And you can pray for hours and hours. But I just spoke two lines. And I know sometimes when I speak, people are like, ah, is that it? The reason why I can give you one line is because there is an altar that speaks in my life. And today as the worshippers were singing, what a coincidence because I was remembering that a day I made a covenant with God and I was worshipping. I'd been praying and fasting for a long time. I didn't even know about covenants. I thought there are things to do with Abraham. I love the Holy Spirit. He teaches us all these things. He knows the mind of God as scripture says. And I was worshipping and singing, listening to William, uh, William McDowell. And he has this song uh, where he says, you are God and we worship you. And another song that uh, he sings with also, who is the Nathaniel Bassi? You are God and we worship you. And then suddenly I just saw the curtains in my room and a wind. And I was like, wow, what is going on? And the Holy Spirit told me, kneel quickly, God has come. And I knelt and he asked me, told me, bow. And I bowed and then God said, I am pleased by your sacrifice. And I was like, okay, Holy Ghost, I don't know how to respond. And so the Holy Ghost told me, just listen, I will tell you what to say. And so God asked me, tell me what you want, my child, and I will give it to you. An altar, 
had been raised through consistent prayer and fasting. The Lord came down. I didn't even understand some of those things until later when the Holy Ghost taught me more. And so the, I said, ah, I can ask for money. I can ask for children, healthy babies. Ah, Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost told me, don't waste this opportunity. The Lord wants to make a covenant with you. That will stand from generation to generation. And so the Holy Ghost told me, ask for long life. Ask for health, divine health. And I did. And the Lord told me, your children will never die early. They will always have good health. And so when people call and they tell me, I'm in ICU, I have a relative, the altar must speak. And all I need to say is, Baba, my children cannot die, for we made a covenant. And that day I told God, I will serve you all my life. And this covenant that we have, I will share with all my children. <clears throat> and that is why when I call someone my child, I don't take it lightly. When I was praying for my son and saying, God, my son must come back to Nairobi. I know there are covenants we have made with God. And this covenant that we make with God must touch the world. I know one of the things that the Holy Spirit later one day told me, told me, Unajua wezi mari mchawi. Oh, sorry, international guys. The Holy Spirit was saying, you know, you cannot marry a witch doctor. And I asked him, I said, of course. He said, no, take it seriously. I said, okay, why Holy Spirit? Because you carry a covenant of long life. If you marry a witch doctor and your children turn out to be witches, even if all churches in the world stand up to say, your children must die, your children will not die. They will live long and terrify the world. <laughs> Covenants are very serious. God will never turn back on his covenant. Covenants are made at the altar. And the interesting thing is that I learned after that, even when God said, I will live long, I will be healthy, the Holy Spirit started teaching me how to respect that covenant and started teaching me how to fast and to especially do the Daniel fast and to have some days in the month where I don't eat for three days as I am fasting and praying. And every time I go for the doctor to check me, he says, Ay, you're very healthy. Why? I will live long. But I'm also participating in the covenant. I'm respecting an altar. I spend more time and I put sacrifice as I am praying. And altars can be physical monuments. Altars can be an institution. Altars can be people. There are people who you meet and you know that is an altar I have met. When they just say hello to you, everything in your life changes. And even as we think of those people, why can't it be you? Why can't it be you? The most accurate measure of the health of your spiritual life is your prayer life. Anybody can teach. Anybody can worship. Anybody can even come and stand here. But how many people can enter the throne and transact with God on behalf of their family, on behalf of their nation, on behalf of the marketplace? I remember when God said, let's pray for the shilling. And someone told me, okay, but Cynthia, you like joking. Do you, you are a business person. You understand, the sh you understand how the market works. It cannot be changed by prayer. And I told a friend of mine who works in State House, I said, the shilling is about to drop and God has told me to sell my dollars. I can see just sell haraka, I can regret but. <laughs> It's a bit painful, but it felt so good <laughs> reading the news that fuel prices have gone down. And you know the thing I love about God, as he's blessing Kenya, the nations around us are being blessed. I saw the nations around us are now crossing the border to come buy fuel in our country. Hi! 
And I was like, Baba, as they are buying that fuel, let them know only God, only God, only God, because there is an altar called Rig East Africa that hears God and speaks over the land and God moves. It takes a man to speak the things that must happen in a nation. It takes you to be the altar for the economy to change. The other story that I enjoyed reading is the president just talking about alcohol and him increasing tax on second generation. It's called second generation alcohol imported. I said, thank you, Jesus. It takes a man to pass by a pub and you say, Baba, may it be shut down in the name of Jesus. And it must be shut down. The other day I passed through and I'm like, Baba, since December I've been praying this pub to be shut down. What is it? Am I not a true prophet of God? Ah, ah, kill a day. And for a man to understand that he's an altar and that everywhere he moves, people will see the power of God. And it is a must. I was dealing with someone and they were giving me a hard time and I, I started laughing. These days when people give me a hard time, I laugh. Because I am like, do you know you will be uprooted from that office? And they called again. I think the Holy Spirit explained it to them. And I've been seeing men giving me a hard time and in a few days, God moves them. I'm like, yes, that makes sense. That is the only way it should be happening. Why? Because I am a system of authorization. I am a platform that allows contact between the heavens and earth. I am the platform that God uses to ensure that it is on earth as it is in heaven. And everything that I do, mine is to ensure that. And it doesn't mean it's easy. When we decide that we are going to be altars, the enemy really comes because he knows you are a whole system. If, God, if the enemy wants to take Kibra down, guess who he will come for first? Members of Rig. He will come for Rig. And I've been seeing it. But we continue to stay in the place of prayer. Luke 18.1 And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not faint. Matthew 21, 13 and, and said unto them it is written my house shall be called the house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves. A den of thieves puts up an altar for Satan. That's why you cannot tell me that I am just a lukewarm Christian. You are either a house of prayer, you as an individual, or a den of thieves. It cannot be. And we saw even when Jesus Christ went to the temple and he found that the house of God was a den of thieves, how it angered him. Is your life glorifying God or angering Jesus? And one of the things I saw in that story is that Jesus acted immediately and whipped up people. In James 15, James chapter 5 verse 16 to 17 it says, Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Let me tell you how powerful the fervent prayer of a righteous man is. In that prayer of a righteous man, in the consistency of a righteous man, altars open up. And people begin to take up territories. That is why it is impossible for any student to die here. It cannot be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We are praying eight hours. An altar has been put up here. 
And the other day the headmaster was so happy to tell me, have you noticed we have bought new chairs? And remember a few weeks before he had told us the financial problems that they go through. And yet now they are seeing the hand of God. Why? The fervent prayer of a righteous man puts up altars and altars that speak and people begin to see the hand of God. Can we see the hand of God in your house? Then maybe if we don't see it, you need to ask yourself questions. Am I a righteous man sending out prayers, praying without ceasing? Are we seeing the hand of God in your estate? I started visiting people and I've been observing those who carry God and those who don't eat your estate will tell me. Outside your gate I will see. For sure I will see. Are you carrying God? Is your altar speaking? When I come to your house, I, I visited a home and I was so humbled. I didn't want to leave. Their sofas were very comfortable. That is Minister Pauline and her husband, Dr. Robert. Nempiris is saying, yes, she enjoyed. We didn't want to leave. The presence of the Holy Ghost was there. There was fellowship. We enjoyed each other. If I come to your house and I see there has never been an open heaven in your house, there is a problem. invite. <laughs> Even those in Dubai, I've seen your invitations. Rig East Africa, Dubai, I am coming. Do you see how territories work? When we pray, territories begin to open up for us in Dubai, in the UK, in Australia, in the US, in Canada. And this comes from the fervent prayer of a righteous man. Only the fervent prayer of a righteous man can open up the heavens. I love that scripture in Corinthians that tells us that when we repent, the heavens open up. It is impossible for the church of God to truly repent and heavens don't open up. Economies don't change. Families are reunited. There are signs of a healed land. And those signs must first be seen here in Rig. People have been sharing testimonies of how they are opening up businesses. And how the hand of God just does things. And a lot of them it's international businesses. It can only be God. And one of them the other day I was just thinking about them. Every decision they make they are calling. How does one do this? How does one do this? How do I write this letter? And I said God you're so interesting. You didn't give this business to the most experienced. That's why they were calling. <laughs> Every day, sometimes five times a day, I was like, oh my goodness. But I said, since we have prayed for God to open this door, let us work on this opportunity, this international opportunity that's, that has opened up for a member of RIG. Consistency will put up an altar. When altars open up, you begin to take up territories. You begin to occupy and as we were speaking about the spheres of influence, that is how you will run and take control of the various spheres of influence that God has given you. Hopefully some of you are ambitious that you want to take over all of them. Because you understand the apostle that you have been called for. Luke 6.12 Luke 6.12 it says, and it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. One thing about Jesus, someone the other day, a client of mine, I was doing some work for them and 
Uh, they came and they said, uh, the MD says, please pass by the office before you leave. And so I went. And the client, I was like, oh my goodness, why does the MD want to see me? We've had a contract now for over four years. I said, oh, I hope they are not telling me. But I said, no, 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 this is my territory. I take over. And so when I went, he asked me, how do you pray the whole night and still work? And that time it was late and he was like, you are still looking fresh. And I was like, it's Jesus. To be honest, I don't know how. I sincerely don't know how. Other than it is Jesus who taught us that he would go to the mountain to pray. And to pray the whole night. And during the day, we would see miracles. Anytime Jesus stood in front of demons, they had to flee. Why? He was an altar. You realize he had a body just like yours and mine. But I love Jesus because he had built an altar through prayer. And Jesus prayed scripture. If you want to build your altar to be powerful, pray scripture. Be consistent every night. And we've been seeing in Rig, it's possible. Most of the people who you see praying at night, throughout the night, they work. And we just find pockets. Sometimes you'll find me seated somewhere, I open the window in the car and just doze for one hour. And even as I doze, I tell God, please, as I am sleeping, this day, and there's something God is doing in rig. People are having dreams that are just, and these days, I, I don't operate so much in dreams, but these days I'm like, God, as I am sleeping, I want to continue. Let it be me and heaven, me and heaven. This is your altar. Let me have, in fact, yesterday I told God, I want to go have a nap for one hour. Let it just be me and heaven, me and heaven. And I was just seeing a ladder up and down, up and down, up and down. Between heaven and earth. In Matthew 26, verse 36 to 43, then Jesus, then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, sit here while I go and pray yonder. Again, prayer. Prayer is the only way to set up a sure altar. And we see as we continue to the end, the reason why the disciples could not do what Jesus could do in verse 43. And he came and he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. To be honest, it's easy to say now what was wrong with these disciples. It was Peter and two sons of Zebedee. They had worked the whole day. They had had a fantastic meal. The last supper. But that is not an excuse for us to sleep. You, we cannot be found sleeping. You know one of the interesting things when you tell people that they are born again but there is an altar speaking in their life that is bringing negative cycles in their life people tell you but I thought once you are born again that's it but we see Peter sleeping we see a time when even as Peter is walking with Jesus Jesus looks at him and he says get behind me Satan if you sleep Satan will come He's always walking, watching. And especially in these last days, we have to be watching without sleep. As you sleep, you tell the Holy Spirit, let us continue. It is me and heaven. It is me and heaven. In your daily life, you continue to always remember every hour of your life. I've been experimenting something to put an alarm every hour. To just remind me to say a prayer for five minutes. I'm still catching up with it. Sometimes even I hear the alarm and continue doing what I am doing. But when I switch it off, I've learned to just say a prayer. Why? Satan is roaming, waiting for us to sleep. As we were reading about the tabernacle, 
We saw that in the tabernacle there was a fire that could never go off. On your altar, that your fire should never go off. Because it means perhaps that day when it goes off, there is a man who was going to pass through carrying demons. And they will pass through with their demons and continue. Someone was passing by and a spirit of death was passing by. And sometimes it's so interesting. I remember one time I didn't want to go to a certain place and the Holy Spirit really pushed me. And when I went, I saw why. I saw this person carrying. She was carrying death. And the Holy Spirit said, see, if you had not passed by, who would I have used to speak over this spirit and to uproot an altar that had been in her family? Her parents died young. If I had slept, and now it was closer. There's a way when you see the spirit on death of someone, you, on de of death on someone, you can tell. This the spirit has been here for a while. It is doing its last round. She was on her last round. And I repented. I told the Holy Spirit, I'm so sorry. We are, cannot sleep. We cannot sleep. We cannot be found asleep. With our eyes heavy. And the importance of prayer. Is that prayer creates a legal platform. For God. For angels. And the spiritual realm. To gain access and to intervene. In the affairs of man. And offer assistance to man. Thank you, my dear brother. He said, Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Prayer allows God. We give him the permission. It, God needs your permission. Sometimes you want to say, I know God, you are seeing my situation. Of course he's seeing. He knew it would happen even before you were born. He needs your permission. God sees, God knows. God loves us. I hear when you tell people, oh, you're, be born again so that you can be a child of God. Someone asks you, are you telling me that I am not a child of God? Oh yes, you are not a child of God. He created you. But he cannot force you to be his child. You must give him permission by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ to be your personal savior. You cannot begin to put up an altar for God and you're not his child. You cannot say that how come God did not. I, see, I saw one time during a shooting in the U.S. and someone was saying, how can God be so cruel and allow a shooting of children? I. In your school, you people cannot even mention God. You, uh, God cannot come and force himself on your school. God cannot. There are things in our home. God cannot force his situation. There are legal points that we have allowed Satan as much as you are born again. And that is why we really need to stay in the place of prayer. I was sharing with my sisters the other day when we had come for prayers that ended up to be thanksgiving service. That there was this woman of God and every time when she would uh, meet someone for marriage, every time, a few weeks to their wedding, the man would disappear. And in the place of prayer, finally it came up that when she was young, Hi, and this young boy in primary school, they told each other, Akina Kupenda, oh sorry international, oh, I really love you. <laughs> and the girl said, I will never leave you, I will be with you forever. And they exchanged words, and she said, I don't want any man, only you, I will, and if it's not you, I will be with nobody else. Hi. How many of you know there is no big small, there is no big prophet and small prophet? Even as your child is speaking in primary school, that is a prophet who was speaking. So that word came to pass. And she was born again, doing the work of God. But there was a soul tie 
there was a legal agreement as much as she's born again that was speaking. And so we truly have to raise that altar through prayer. In the place of prayer is where God let us know where the problem was. Ezekiel uh, 22, 30 to 31. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land and I should not destroy it. But I found none. By the way, when the Lord is, comes and finds a gap, that's why you see some things happening that don't look like him. Therefore, have I poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. Words, by the way, are keys and padlocks. Altars, remember, give life to covenant. And there are times even the Lord wants to come and do something in the nation. And does not find anybody. Therefore, he has no legal permission to act. The sad things that we see in our nation. There's a very sad situation. And if you're on social media, please join TikTok. Ah, there's a voice trending on TikTok. If your voice is trending on TikTok, raise your hand. Dibi wacha kuwa humble. Put it up. His voice is trending. All businesses are using his voice. I just keep on opening up. I see business people, they are putting Dibi's voice. Hey, Dibi, congratulations. And all of them, I feel like writing there. Here ni sauti ya kijana wangu. That is my son. Great voice. That is my son. And the beautiful thing is, everyone, it is so powerful. Everyone using the, the bee's voice is opening up an altar for God in their business. I believe there is nobody, and DB, I want you to check on them. There is nobody who can be speaking about their business using the bee's voice and their business will fall down. If your business is falling, and a TikTok... Chukua your voice ya DB, let it speak over your business. He's a full altar of God. An altar of God. And that is how, and I said, wow, look at this. And it is not just in Kenya that people are stealing his voice. It is all over the world. I like how God moves in practical ways. But if you go through TikTok also, you will realize how the enemy has taken over our children. Young teens putting up sex videos of themselves, age 12, 13. Most of them are in Danga Sarit Center. Don't you just be dropping your child Sarit Center of your of your. They are using the toilets in Sarit Center. Go to those social media spaces as you're praying, as you're taking over the nation. Ask the Lord, where do I need to go to feel the heartbeat of this nation? To receive my prayer points. And as I am praying even in TikTok, to take over TikTok. Because as I take over, as DB has shown us by example, it is God taking over. Because we are the ones who can open the legal platform for God, for the angels and the spiritual realm to get access and to intervene on earth in the affairs of men. Only us can do it. That is why I always say one of the missions that we have as RIG is to preach the gospel. Today we are out on two missions. Otherwise, this room would have been so full. But I don't mind teaching here on Sunday a room with five people because the rest have gone to evangelize. And we make sure people are getting saved. And they are accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. Because every soul that we turn to Christ is a potential altar that will give God permission to reign 
on earth. One of the beautiful things as we were worshiping and I was there, I saw Jesus Christ appear and he showed me this beautiful picture of the last day when he comes and how we will reign with him. We were singing a song of Jehovah Savaot and the Lord was saying, do you know why you people, I allow you to go through warfare? I am preparing you to be great generals. You will be leading at the front with Jesus Christ as he reigns for a thousand years. And you saw how God came through when we sang that song. Part of it is to tell you there are battles coming. I hope you understand. But the Lord was saying he will strengthen you. I love Jehovah Sabaoth. The way he shows. And Jehovah Sabaoth likes showing off. He comes through. He fights. Finishes everything. I like how he told Joshua. Give a good slaughter. Slaughter. He didn't say give a good fight. He said give a good slaughter. That your enemies will never rise up again. And that God will reign on earth. But he needs your permission. He needs your home to be the altar. He needs Rig East Africa to be the altar. He needs you to be the altar. And that is why the enemy comes for you all the time. Because he knows you are the one to give God the permission. You are the legal entry on earth for Satan or for God. How can it be that a child of God is a small thing if you truly know who you are? How can you face men with fear while you know that as you are talking and fighting me, I am the altar. I can ask God, come down and finish this one now. And that is why these days I laugh. Someone the other day was telling me a story and said, Cynthia, when so and so came and told you you have been put on a list, to be fired. Why did you laugh? When they asked me, I laughed again. I, I laughed. It is still funny. I cannot imagine a mere mo man, mortal man, can put me on a list to fire Cynthia. <laughs> I'm on altar. And I said, Mutajua KBC kona wenyewe. Hey! It was so, don't you find it funny? I, I, even now I find it funny. A full altar. You can write there to be fired. Me can never be me. This is an altar. And any day I am standing in KBC, they are going to see the hand of God. By the way, if you work in government, I hope you know all advertisements can only come to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That is what altars do. Money must come. There must be improvement. The hand of God. And for the first time after that, now we started having prayers. The MD called for prayers. An altar had been erected. And more and more people are always saying, pray for me, pray for me. Let us go to that room and pray. An altar speaks. A legal platform. You are. To allow and children of God. I hope you saw the angels in this room today. They are still here. They've just told me, hey, bado to kohapa. I hope you are seeing them in that corner. And they like opening here. I don't know why. What were his side? Oh, you've seen also. Yeah, they like opening here. I don't know why. They go up and down from this corner here. But don't worry, they are all over. There's one there in that corner. <laughs> And as we were singing, Jehovah Sabaot too came with swords. A portal had been opened. We said legally, you can now come God and do what you want. Nobody here should leave this room with an altar speaking in their life that is not of God. Amen. What are the two angels for? Take advantage any situation. And as we were praying, the Holy Spirit showed me some two situations I've been battling. And he said, speak. And he took me to an office of a man and I just spoke. He must look for me this week and apologize. Because we gave God the legal platform. And a lot of times I've come to realize it's like God is, cannot wait for you to open that legal platform. And blesses and blesses and blesses. One of the things why God 
wants us to have altars, I've come to realize, is that sometimes when you're praying for someone and they don't want God, the Holy Spirit leads me to, tell, to say, Baba, give them an encounter. You know, when men see God, you are, after Saul saw God, he became Peter. I'm seeing people do this. They know. The fire you see in me, I'm very shy. The fire you see in me is that fire when I saw my curtains do this. And the Holy Spirit said, go down quickly. And I felt the presence of God. And all my hair stood. And I saw God. Even though I was kneeling. And I was told to bend completely. And today, even when God entered, that I couldn't help but go down. Because when you see God, everything changes. And everything in you knows that you have been called and you're an altar. And that, let that be your prayer. Sometimes even as we are praying, Baba, destroy that person. Sometimes pray and say, Baba, let this person see you. Let them see your hand. Let them have a vision of you. And you can do it on their behalf. Why? You have opened a legal platform for God, angels, and the spiritual realm. Only the children of God can do this. The children of Satan, yes, can open doors for demons, for Satan, and a very dark world. And they really know how to give to their altar. One of the most difficult things I was just asking the Lord this morning as I was making my bed, I said, ah, God, how could you have sent me to Nigeria to pray? Because I was singing this song of mercy by Victoria. And I was singing as remembering how in Nigeria I would sing that song, cry for mercy until my voice is no more, my nose would be blocked. There's a day I couldn't breathe. I said, oh God, I'm going to die asking for mercy. And I was like, God, why did you send me? And still, we lost. Well, it's something that the Lord continues to teach us every day. But then, Many things didn't happen. The deaths that we saw were going to happen in Nigeria. The bloodshed did not happen. But I also came to find out that when the children of Satan give more on their altar than the children of God, all hell breaks loose. When the children of God give to the altar, give themselves as a sacrifice, all heavens break loose. Anything that we see on earth is because of the church. We can decide, oh, let us go blame government and all your other stories, but it is the church. The correct order on earth is and then state. The third point the altar of prayer is God-authorized system for enforcing dominion and complaint. Whenever you prevail in the realm of the spirit, an altar prevails. And we've seen an altar here speak today. And the worship was powerful, the presence of God powerful. Why? Those prayers you've been making every single day. An altar is speaking. And there are many things sometimes, I've been seeing testimonies this week. Someone got married yesterday in the U.S. And they were so happy. And one day she was just talking and I just said, your marriage is around the corner. And it's easy to say, wow, Cynthia, you're a serious prophet. It is that altar of prayer that you have raised that can alternate the plans of the enemy. It is the altar of prayer that 
God uses. It is his authorized system for us to gain dominion. In your business, dominate. The other day I sat in a meeting and they said, you are the only person we could find in PR and understand security that we could hire for this job. I was like, wow. And I truly believe if you're in business, you should sit in places where people say you're the only one. Why you dominate? And you should have that evidence that you dominate. In the morning, today the Holy Spirit was giving me a strategy for Kibra. But my assignment ngumu and he said, be going now to Kibra, the field there, and pray. There is a con I see somebody doing this because I know they were told. The Lord told me there are several people he has told. And not to worry, they'll be assisting me. We'll be meeting Kibra early in the morning to pray. And uh, yesterday, I just, the Lord, I was praying about Kibra and saying, God, in this area, I really need to see your hand. Uh, the Lord knows LinkedIn. He sent me there. I opened, then he showed me a man. He said, follow this man and this man and this woman. In a short time, I saw the man follow back. I said, hiya, God. Why? We have dominion. If, if there is one testimony that rig should have, it's not that we are paying rent, it's that we have taken over. It is not a coincidence that we have so many staff working as ambassadors, working as business leaders, working in state house. You, not, we sh you should not be locked out of state house, by the way. Having appointments, seeing people talking about their families and uprooting things that have been happening for decades and decades. Dominion should be a great sign in your life if you're faithful to the prayer altar. And a lot of times when people share some issues, first thing I ask, someone the other day was telling me, I really feel, feel I'm so lost, I've lost direction. And some of you, I know you, you're not happy, you get angry when I tell you, tell me about your prayer life. Your prayer life, Im immediately you tell me some things I know. You are very far from Jesus. You are very far. And they, someone starts telling me, I pray twice or thrice a day. That consistent prayer that you see every day that we have of eight hours builds a very strong and powerful altar. Do you have it? Do your children know? My niece, I have a niece who was staying with me. She knows at a certain time, she'll tell people, reduce volume. And when we're at my mom's place, she'll tell people, reduce the internet you are using downstairs. Because I'm upstairs and I need to put music to worship. A certain time that you have put aside for you and God. As you build that altar. And I want us to look into some steps of building an altar for God as we close. And we see this, even when God was talking to Abraham. And powerful men, you always see God building an altar with them. He tells them, go build me an altar. As I even read earlier on Moses. The first thing that we see with Abraham, God tells him to move from his home. And we must first start by demolishing old altars and repent. You must remove all existing altars in your life that were raised by Satan. And that is why repentance is a very crucial prayer. Repentance, where anytime you begin to pray and you tell God, there's a powerful prayer. Even today I was saying that prayer. I told God, anything in my life that is not of you, 
remove it and i started crying because there is something i know god was is going to remove and it is so dear to me i said oh god give me the grace but god loves that prayer <laughs> in repentance as you are repenting and make repentance a lifestyle even if you want to do it three times a day do it Baba, anything in my life that does not look like you, remove it. Begin to show me the things in my life that don't look like you. Altars in my life that do not represent you, uproot them, show them to me. And you begin to speak. It is interesting when you make this prayer, you will begin to see your great-grandmother, your great-grandfather in visions. And them doing things, building things, uh, putting things in your compound. Aye. I remember when I started seeing this, I'd call my mom. She would be the evidence because some things were so insane. And I'd ask my mom, has one, two, three ever happened? I saw so and so, they dug, they did. And I started uprooting altars. And the funny thing is, as you are putting altars, those people who, have put, who put up those altars of Satan in your family, in the nation, they must come for you. I remember one time we were putting an altar. In fact, we were at George's wedding. Then I received a phone call. I called the intercessors. I said, hey, I've been called for a meeting. And I knew the owner of that altar wants to see this one who can approve this altar. They have that thing. I don't know why. Even for my family, the one who had put up funny altars, the Holy Spirit told me when you arrive in this place, they will ask for you. And they want to see. Is it that you know a bigger Satan? I don't know why they always think you are visiting a bigger witch doctor. <laughs> and the funny thing is that God has always told me, go and see them. Let them see your God. Let them know there is a God. And a lot of times after that meeting, it is usually the end of them. And you go there and you make a statement. As I'm standing in front of you, it is the presence of God standing in front of you. And they usually even have planned traps. I was sharing with them the traps. I looked at it. I said, I surely said, Tan, you should have hidden it a bit. I, uh, no, no, Satan, we cannot. And he goes for your weakest, weakest point. And wants to see his last chance. Demolish those old altars. Repent of your personal sins and the sins of your forefathers. We have seen even in scripture, men repenting on behalf of nations. Nehemiah, Daniel has a powerful chapter repenting on behalf of a nation and Ezra. And let me tell you, that is why there is a rise of prophets. People are thinking prophets are rising in this nation. To be telling people, oh, I've seen a car falling. Ah, 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 ah. And I've been telling God, I, it is okay. I don't, I don't always have to see. It just happens. But I want to see where we need to go uproot. Not every time, who is my husband? When is my husband coming? It, uh, we are using the prophetic gift for the nations. To demolish old altars. That day, that fire in KBC was an altar that was put up by the colonialists. That any time frequencies and airwaves of KBC go through the nation of Kenya, it is their altar speaking. But right now, any frequency of KBC, it is the voice of God. You can play even a hundred secular songs, but the voice of God will be heard. There is an altar of God in KBC. We are not in KBC to be able to pay rent. We are in KBC to make sure every frequency releases the voice of God. We have demolished the old altars. Begin to ask God to show you these altars in your life that must be demolished and will be demolished by you. How? You are in the place of prayer. You have now given God the legal rights. Why will he not show you what is in you that is not of him? What is in your business that is not of him? What is in your apartment that is not of him? What is in your house that is not of him? What is in this nation? 
one of the things, and I believe that is why I dropped that man in state house. The day we were in state house, he was there on his knees, and the Lord showed us things to uproot in state house. And the next day, People had to now call for press conferences to begin to explain, oh, we are not devil worshippers, we are not. I said, hallelujah. The prophets kneeled. We uprooted you from state house. And men have been fired all left, right, and center in this nation because they were worshipping Dagon. How is it that our companies can be run by Dagon and we are children of God who can bring the full authority of God into companies and shake down Dagon and give a good slaughter. Any enemy in your life, any system, any altar, today you must give it a good slaughter. Amen. Demolish those altars. And as you demolish, the next thing that you must do is to stand as a priest and king and plead mercy. Identify yourself as a king and priest of God. That's king. You must walk in this nation as a king. Even if you are a sweeper, walk like a king. I have a worker of mine in my house. Anybody who's vit visited me, you know her. Nempiris, what's her name? Yeah, she's called Rose. Rose walks in my house like a king. If you come to my door and she doesn't know you are coming, she'll ask, Unataka nini? You can think it's her house. <laughs> she's the custodian of the house. No, and she'll tell you by the way, no. How to India. <laughs> I love the way she has taken her position. It is up to you to decide what position you are going to take. If you read scripture and understand scripture, you will understand you've not been called to be a slave, a servant. You've been called to be a king. And when you see something is not right, that's one thing that amazes me about Christians. We don't speak. We don't say this is wrong. Why? Because you are a slave. You are full of fear. Kings don't fear. I like observing kings and presidents. They just do things you are like, Akinayo ni madarao. One time I saw a president <laughs> traveling, came with so, into a foreign country, came with so many trucks, vehicles, security, plus a toilet that was being guarded. <laughs> I said, Whoa, I, this kingship seems chesa. <laughs> hey, you must carry now your toilet and guard it. Kings can do all those things. They can break protocol. Yeah, you can sit in your company as your MD is saying things. You say, we cancel that. You break protocol. I cancel that in the name of Jesus. And let me tell you, the enemy, you see this thing that we have been praying for and has come to pass. The enemy now must come to come and prove to us. He wants to come and do something and shake this nation, pray over the security of this nation and against terrorists. Reverse those things. In your companies, some companies will still tell people they are going to lay off. Speak and reverse them. Stand as a priest and king. You see it in Revelation 5.10 that you can read later. Begin to take scripture and speak. First Peter 2.10 that we are a chosen generation. Do you realize that any time you speak up the word of God, and that's why Satan does not like us speaking the word of God. You are a king. You are making legal decrees that must come to pass. Anybody who takes care of their altar, when they pick up the word of God, that word must come to pass. After, oh, I love the Holy Spirit, after we finished the transaction with God and made a covenant, the Holy Spirit was one day told me, do you want to exercise what you received that day? I said yes. What do we do? He said, ah, very good question. Let me show you what to do. Do you see that sun there? Command rain. I said, eh? He said, yeah. I said, let there be rain. And within a few minutes, I saw rain. And then he said, ask it to stop. Rain stop. Ah, rain stopped. I, sa I said, I like this. It's like the way you pay play with switch. On, off, on, off, on, off. I said, ah, ah. Sun, come out. Sun came out. 
This is how powerful a man is. When you agree with the word that you are a priest and a king, that you have dominion, and you begin to speak, that word must come to pass. And I'm really learning these days some situations when people come. I don't need to pray 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I just need to speak. And that word must come to pass. I have spent time in the secret place. My altar is speaking. I have come to the understanding that I am a priest and king. The most powerful people on earth, by the way, are priests and kings who have learned how to plead mercy on behalf of nations. And that is one of the things that makes Rig East Africa so powerful. Those prayers that you see us making on behalf of nations, you begin to take up territory. It is impossible for you to take up Kenya as your territory. And tomorrow you are praying for rent. Impossible. Take up territory of this nation and every door must open and say yes to you. The next point, address the deity in the name of Jesus Christ, calling it by its name. After you are done with repentance for the sins that have been committed, you have to learn how to address the altars and break them every evil altar, every altar in your life and address it directly. That's why you cannot just be speaking all the time praying, I, I uproot any altar in my life that is not of God. Sometimes you see when you come for prayer, I just say, wait, last week I was praying for someone and I asked people to leave their room. The Holy Spirit was speaking. I needed to see with precision which altar was speaking. Make the Holy Spirit your best friend. And then after that, and you know, sometimes when you begin to pray for somebody, that thing looks at you in your face. When somebody came to tell me how I'm on a list to be fired, that person was carrying a spirit, and that person was even looking at me in the mirror to see my reaction. And I could see in her eyes, it was not her, it was a spirit. And I looked in the mirror and I laughed. You must learn how to uproot with precision. If you notice, when the enemy is putting up altars, he just doesn't say, I'm putting up an evil altar in your family. No. There's a certain altar he will put. Either there's a problem of alcohol, for example, in your family, that you must face and talk to it and say, I love dealing in the spirit because as you're praying for someone, you even see Satan there guarding it. And sometimes as I'm praying, you hear me telling Satan, come out of there. Because as I am praying, he's there, he comes. I say, ah, come on. We cannot do this today. You must leave. This is a child of God. There will be no alcohol in their family. You must speak it and carry the authority of God. And speak over that exact thing and uproot it. Satan is very precise. But Christians will like making blanket prayers. That can be so powerless. We need the Holy Ghost. And as you bring it down. Bring down that altar using the name of Jesus. And we see even Jesus, when he was casting demons, how he would even call them legions. He knew exactly what he was casting out. And sometimes it is good after even you cast out demons in people, tell them, it happened through one, two, three. Never open this door. If you do one, two, three, you are opening that door again. One of the ways to really open those doors is sin. That's why Jesus used to say, go and sin no more. The next thing that you need to do is to renounce every existing agreement between Satan and those who built that altar. Renounce every token, every dedication, renounce every vow. Vows make altars very powerful. A promise that was made. Renounce any binding words any action that was taken and render them powerless. 
The other thing that you also have to do is to burn the token. Some of you, you God will show you. By the way, when you are uprooting altars, there are times God will send you. In my family, when I had to uproot some of those things, I had to go to where they had been put. And then you go uproot and you burn. There are some things God will show you, someone giving you some. When you begin to pray, and then it is so funny. God, show me what is going on here. God, you see in a dream, somebody, a gift they gave you. Some of you start to wonder, Yo, when you, eh? you go take it immediately in the middle of the night and you burn it. Get rid of those tokens, those covenants with a fire. Put up that fire and burn and speak in the name of Jesus. And you really need the Holy Spirit to show you these things. Defrock the former priesthood. There is a priesthood always. And make sure you remove their priestly garments. And take away their staff of authority. And their mandate. Anytime you are put in your family an altar, put up an altar for God. You be the priest and take care of that altar. Make sure it never goes down. The fire never goes down. And always, and always the Lord will show you even in your family home. In my family home, I put up an altar. When our family is going through something, something happens. And all of us, we know in our family, we all have altars in our home. But there are times God says, go back to that altar in your parents' home and pray from there. And once you uproot an altar, all the days of your life, your work is to make sure the altar of God you put in that family will never go down. And to know that for real you have put an altar, it's not that suddenly you will begin to always see miracles in your life. Sometimes it is the attacks that will come from the same, same family members. That's how you know that altar is real. And it is speaking. And give it time. Let them speak. Let them do whatever. As they are speaking, tormenting you, you'll be surprised. Some of them are so born again. You are saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I dedicate them back to you. Let them understand. They will all one day come back and apologize. I am speaking out of experience. And then the one who put up those altars of Satan, deal with them. Even if it is a relative or somebody you love. In warfare, we don't do emotions. We do the will of God. And this one for families is a difficult one sometimes. But you must do the will of God. I say this because sometimes God will tell you a difficult instruction that I have sent many to this person and they still continue to play with me. Yet your family is meant to be a family of prophets and they've been used to put up an altar of Satan. And you find in a family of prophets there is a lot of witchcraft. And so sometimes God can give an instruction and you see it happening on a family member. But the will of God must prevail. You must get to a place. That scripture that says, if my father and my mother is a very real scripture. The next thing that you must do after you've defrocked the former priesthood Charge the whole of creation to bear witness to what you are doing. Because when people enter into evil covenants, when our ancestors did it, they would invite creation to take note of their deeds. The rivers, the mountains, the sun, the moon, the stars. And I see people, <laughs> when I'm praying for people who there is alcohol problems in their family. I begin to see their ancestors, their fathers, when they begin to drink, every time they open, our ancestors, they pour on the ground. You enter a covenant that alcohol will run in your family. And you do it consistently. An altar comes up. And you, you will go to that same family, 
uproot that altar, dethrone the priest, and after that take oil and pour on the grounds of your family. Learn how to be strategic. If you are going to take down altars and put up altars of God, be serious about it. And after that, you must live a life of consecration so that the fire never burns down, never goes down. Keep that fire burning. And one of the ways of also keeping that fire burning, recruit more members. If it's in your office, recruit more people in that Bible study, that fellowship. More people, let us pray together. Let us put in your, in your office, please. If I pass by your office, introduce me to your prayer group for your office. And it is easy to start. I, you, you are all uh, prophets. How I started mine, I would just, when somebody is touching me, I say, ah, are you going through one, two, three? Hey! How did you know that the Holy Spirit? Let us pray. They pray, they pray, you pray, you pray. They see the power of God. The next day you come, they've brought three other people. You all pray. It grows and grows and grows. There are times when I had to be out of the office for three months. For example, when I was in Nigeria, the altar was still speaking. Why? We were many. I recruited. Do you know how Satan really likes recruiting? Kwanini recruiting? Be, rec be recruiting agents. And the more you are recruiting agent, the more the gift of the prophetic grows in you. And as you recruit, remember to teach consistency in prayer. Consistency in? We are going to close with a word of prayer. <clears throat>